El Toro is often called the world's best coaster. The ride definitely gets a lot of hype, and I traveled across the country just to see the hype for myself. So I'm going to break down the ride by element and give all my thoughts on this amazing ride. But is it really the world's greatest wooden roller coaster? Find out in this video. On this trip, some rides surprised me more than others. This ride was definitely one of them. I rode it first thing in the morning, and it took me by a complete surprise. I had just ridden King the Ka before, and I was honestly most hyped for King the Ka. But then I saw El Toro and ran for it. I took the back row of course, and once that first drop hit, I was completely in shock. After that one ride, I knew I had to marathon it, so I pretty much marathoned this ride the most out of any coasters at Great Adventure, and I spent the whole day riding it. After exiting the station, you start the ride off with this insane ascent with a cable lift hill. This feels really fast, and you're rocketed straight up to the top. It doesn't give you much time to take in the views, but that's okay because once you get to the top, there's plenty of great views with the safari in front of you, and King Nika to your left with Medusa on your right. I forgot the ride had the cable lift hill, so once we started going up fast, I was definitely taken by surprise. Yeah, it does sacrifice an amazing view, but that's okay because it gets the ride started and it's a great preview of the ride to come. An action-packed and fast ride. You start making a turn to the left, and this gives you a great view before you dive right back down to the ground. Now this drop might actually be one of the most insane on any roller coasters in the back row. You see the whole first half of the train pretty much at the bottom of the hill before you're absolutely whipped down with ejector air. It's reminiscent of the RMC drops, but those don't even compare because of this ride's long trains. It seriously might be some of the strongest ejector air I've ever experienced. In off-ride, this thing looks massive. I mean, it's definitely going to be intimidating for first-time riders, and even seasoned roller coaster enthusiasts might be a little scared by this drop. And this drop gives you a great near miss before heading straight back up into an absolutely giant camelback. Now, going in, I knew these were going to be great elements, but it was completely different from what I expected. This airtime is different from any other roller coaster. The airtime on the Camelbacks feel like a B&M Hyper Hill, except instead of the floater progressively getting stronger, it's powerful ejector. So in the back, by the time you're exiting the apex, you're getting the strongest ejector ever. It goes from weak ejector to actually some of the most powerful on any ride. And it's really, really sustained. And what's great is there's two of these, which makes it one of the best one-two punches of any element right next to each other. And the second one hits just as strong as the first one. And these things look huge and they feel huge while you're riding it. With some extra lap bar room, you're definitely gonna be flying. Then you head up into this weird turnaround that actually gives a little bit of lateral airtime, especially if you're in the front car. And then you make a strong turn to the right where this is definitely the roughest part of the ride, but it's not that rough, especially if you keep your back off the seat back. But really, it's just nitpicking. And then you head right back up into another airtime hill that's like a half camelback. People say it's one of the weaker parts of the ride, but no, this element in the back actually still gives really strong airtime. On my first ride, I was pleasantly surprised. Then you head into this really slow, long, drawn out hill. Probably one of the more weaker elements on the ride, but still gives off some great airtime, of course. And then this is when you head to the left before entering probably the best element on the ride. I mean, this thing delivers. The hype is actually justified. It hits you with this really powerful airtime hill, and this is right before you enter the twister section of the ride. Now, this gets a lot of hate for no reason. I think it's just because the rest of the ride is so good. I mean, intimate switchbacks are always some of the best. Now, they're not switchbacks that you'd find on Maverick or Velocicoaster, but they're still pretty whippy and intense. This then pops you right back up into an off-axis airtime hill, one of the more forgotten elements on the ride, but still obviously a great one. And then the rest of the ride kind of meanders to the brake run. Like, you're not going to get much airtime after this. Mostly because the brake run is so elevated, but it's still a great way to end the ride. And I just think that the dead sections get too much hate. This ends an absolutely fantastic ride, and on the brake run, you will be wanting to get back in line. 
because this ride is so fun to marathon. It feels like if Maverick was a wooden hyper roller coaster. This ride is absolutely insane. I think it is justified to call this one of the world's best wooden roller coasters. In every row you're gonna get a good ride, well, except for the wheel seats. And that's why you definitely have to ride this ride right. But the question is, where does it rank for me? I'd rank it as my favorite Intamin. I have it above Velocicoaster, but it doesn't compare to Steel Vengeance. I think Steel Vengeance is better. The ride is just longer, and every hill delivers. There's no dead spots on Steel Vengeance. Like, yeah, El Toro has a little bit of dead spots, and they aren't too bad, but I'd rather just have a ride that just feels relentless. Okay, but El Toro seriously has the strongest airtime on any roller coaster I've ridden. And if you know this channel, I absolutely love airtime. I mean, just look at the name. So obviously, it's going to be up there in the top 10, and it's going to be pretty high. If you haven't ridden El Toro, I seriously suggest it. Go comment down below where you rank this ride among the other wooden roller coasters. And thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.